I'll admit it, I've been slow on getting a separate video out as this, I, I, I just didn't want to just react. I wanted to see how it was going to play out and see what other people were saying and what they would be doing as a reaction to what I would consider being the biggest development in our industry since at least the 20 years that I've been in it. And the reactions, well, they've been surprising, to say the least. I have the luxury of networking with some of the biggest teams in the country. These people are far more successful than I am. Smart folks that are on the top of the industry. And I've just been shocked by their response, or well, should I say the lack of response. It seems that I can't even say the majority because it feels like nearly the entirety of our industry is just continuing to operate in a fashion that the business is gonna stay the same, but the way we do it is gonna be a little bit different. Yes, we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about my opinion on the future and what I'm seeing today and what it means for you, the consumer. I think a lot of what I'm about to say, quite frankly, it's going to surprise you. Real quick, my name is Jeff Chubb and I'm a retired investment banker turned real estate agent and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any real estate questions, then no, I'm here to help. Let's recap extremely quickly. The NAR severed with a group of sellers in a class action lawsuit with this settlement came agreement on changes on how the organization operates and thereby how the industry is going to operate. Essentially, what is being called for is a decoupling of the real estate commissions where the seller, they don't pay for both the buyer and the seller representation. There's more there, but in the end, that's really all that you need to really know for now. Okay, so what's happening now? What's the pillow talk in the industry, if you will? My perspective in looking around is that the majority are saying that nothing is going to change. Yes, everyone has admitted that a buyer appointment will now need to be done from the beginning. Speaking of which, did you know that only 9% of agents had a buyer presentation? It just shows you how unprofessional so many of these agents running around were and why part-time agents were actually able to survive in this industry. The buyer agency fee being paid by the seller allowed for it. But more on that in just a moment. So agents have all pretty much agreed that there's not going to be any more running to houses to show buyers property and that there will be a systematic approach to having a buyer consultation first where you go over the process and how an agent gets compensated. I've seen some agents celebrate this, saying that they're now going to get a 3.5% commission. And team leaders saying it all comes down to training. They have started training their sales force already, quite frankly. It seems that everyone just believes that the consumer will just happily agree. This is where I disagree. I have said that I don't understand how there can be a fundamental change in our industry, but yet there's no systematic change. If the fundamentals change, then the way that things are done need to change as well. It seems as simple as one plus one to me. The answer is two. But I feel like what I'm seeing and hearing is that people are yelling five as the answer from the rooftops. And don't get me wrong, in the end, I actually think the consumer ends up losing. But more on that one in just a couple moments. So everyone seems to agree that the way the buyer side is initially handled is going to change. And that will be for the better. More professionalism will actually help elevate the industry. But I don't agree that a buyer is going to agree to pay a 2.5% or 3 or even a 3.5% commission. How willing or able is a buyer that is putting 3% down going to be to pay an agent a 3% commission on top of it? And I know what buyer agents are going to say. They are going to say that, well, the seller, they're going to pay the fee. And that it's all going to be negotiated into the deal. But that is not a guarantee. I'm already seeing a lot of sellers balking at paying the fee. And I've even seen one industry leader say that all agents need to sign a pledge explaining to a seller why they need to offer a buyer agent commission. A pledge? Really? There will be sellers that will be all set in their way. And no matter what you do and no matter what you say and how you explain it, they won't pay a buyer fee. It's just unrealistic. So here's what's going to happen. Come July, there will be no compensation in the MLS. It won't be allowed. So the agent will call the other agent and ask if there's a buyer agent commission being offered. Let's just play this one out here. Let's say the agent says no. The buyer agent's going to go back to the buyer and let them know. The buyer will decide on whether they want to see the house or not. If they don't, then that's how it hurts the seller. If they do and then bought the house and can't come to terms with the seller on price with that fee negotiated in, then everyone needs to be prepared for a world of a mess. 
it's not going to be pretty. And then the seller will get angry that the house isn't selling or isn't selling based off the comps pricing because keep in mind that those past comps actually worked in that buyer agency fee. There will be attorneys who will jump at the opportunity to write an offer and charge a flat fee. They won't offer any support from a pricing standpoint. They won't be out there showing properties, no advice, no strategy on how to be more competitive because they won't be financially motivated for the buyer to get an accepted offer. If anything, the buyer losing out means another $1,000 for the next offer to be written. That's a win in the lawyer's eyes. Attorneys stealing deals off of agents' backs will lead to seller agents not just showing houses to anyone and everyone. If someone wants to see a house, then a one-time showing form will have to be signed, acknowledging that if they like the house, then they will pay whatever fee that that agent's charging and that they will be acting as a facilitator in the deal, not a buyer agent. This is how so many agents are forced to leave the business. I have heard estimates from no agents leaving, which, well, that's a load of you know what, to 250,000 agents to 800,000 agents leaving. I don't know the number, but the fallout, it's going to be big in this realignment. This decrease in the agent count will also lead to a consolidation of real estate companies, as well as companies that support the real estate industry. It's going to be a depression from a job standpoint in the industry in all the industries that actually support it. But we're going to circle back on this one in just a couple moments. This new world order, it's ultimately going to result in an environment where a buyer has options and gets to choose. Do they want to work under contingency for a certain percent at the time of closing or do they want to pay as they go and possibly save thousands of dollars depending on how long they look and how much they utilize their real estate agent? Using a more experienced agent would actually ultimately cost you more than using a newer agent. And in the end, I actually think this is where the consumer wins out. I mentioned earlier that I felt that the consumer ultimately loses. So how does this happen? While the consumer picks up choice from the buyer agency standpoint, they actually lose out on transparency. You're going to ultimately see more pocket listings that don't hit the MLS. You're going to see backroom deals between agents on fees. Consumers will lose a lot of the freebies that they have gotten very used to over the years from the agent community. I think the real estate in industry becomes, well, a lot like the law industry. Lawyers, they don't give anything for free, with the exception of that initial consultation. After that, you're on the clock, and it's going to end up being very similar. You see, the reason an agent gets paid so much money on a per-transaction deal is that they aren't guaranteed income for their time and their material costs. The compensation, it needs to be higher in order to account for that risk. Reduce that risk through a pay-as-you-go model, and the agent, they can charge less. With the decreased value of a buyer lead and the decreased earnings comes the trickle-down effect. Zillow, Realtor.com, Homes.com, and other sites like that only exist to generate a lead and then sell it to the agent community. Well, if that lead's no longer worth the $500 or $750, then companies like this are going to have to adjust their business model. I'm not smart enough to figure out where those models are actually headed, but what I do know is there will have to be changes there to their model if the agent model changes. The consumer ends up losing here. But the big place that the consumer actually loses is that the National Association of Realtors, they're going to soon cease to exist. While I, as an agent, was paying for the NAR, the NAR didn't really care about me. They were always focused on the consumer. Their philosophy was that if they took care of the consumer, then the consumer, it's going to take care of them. There were little to no benefits to us agents for the boatload of money that we were forced to spend on this organization each and every single year. So where did all of that money go? Well, the NAR was considered the strongest lobbying arm in the country. Politicians have been trying to get rid of that interest deduction that homeowners have enjoyed for years. The NAR has always been in their way. You could consider that tax benefit that all homeowners love gone with it, and it will happen in a relatively short period of time. The next benefit that they're going to go after is the capital gain benefit tax exclusion, where each individual does have to pay capital gains tax on the first $250,000 of profit and has a million for a married couple when selling their home. Now, this ends up killing the consumer, especially the lower income consumer, which has gotten used to housing being the vehicle 
has a built-in savings to have at least something for retirement. My guess is the greedy politicians, they're going to start at the higher tax brackets and then move their way down. They won't go for it all at once, but it's going to disappear, and it's going to disappear rather quickly. Investor incentives. Call me naive, but I actually think they stay. A lot of these investors, especially the bigger ones, well, they got some pool, political pool. Speaking of investors and less transparency, this is where the investor actually wins and the consumer loses. Homeowners, they're going to have less information to utilize and ultimately be at a disadvantage when going up against professional investors. The first time in veteran home buyers, they're going to really get hurt throughout this process. Though the fee that they can offer when buying a house will most likely be a lower fee. They will struggle securing houses even more in a tight inventory market. And a lot of buyers will actually ultimately end up going directly to the seller agent and have no one looking out for their best interest. This will lead to them getting worse values on a house while going it alone and getting no advice on issues that come up through the transaction like in home inspections as an example. I guess you could say this is a huge win for the sellers, but it's going to create a lot more litigation. So I guess it's really another win for the attorneys. In the end, I see big changes in the industry. I see fees going down. I see the amount of agents in the industry drastically decreasing. I see consolidation of real estate companies. I see the industry supporting the real estate industry consolidating as well. I see the level of service decreasing as a whole, but also getting a more sliding scale. Think of it as you get what you pay for. I see the rate of home ownership decreasing. I see a lot more dual agency or unrepresented buyers. And because of that, I see a lot more lawsuits. I see less transparency in the marketplace. And as I said earlier, I ultimately see the consumer losing. No one knows for sure what's going to happen. There'll be a lot of testing and adjusting. I personally just rolled out a 1% seller plan. Maybe that's what the market wants. If not, then I'm going to adjust. And on the other side, I rolled out an hourly buyer agent plan. Maybe that is what the buyer has wanted all along. Again, if not, then I'm going to adjust. I believe the consumer should have choices, which is why my seller plans range from 1% to 4% and why a buyer can hire me on a contingency basis or pay on an hourly basis. It's my bet that this will become the industry standard. The consumer should have choices. I tried to roll out a program that gave the consumer choices years ago and was shut down by our local MLS. I just don't know if the way these choices are coming about was the best way. The industry, it's going to adapt. The industry will contract. And those left standing, well, they're going to thrive. Again, it's Jeff Chubb. Don't hesitate reaching out with questions. Or if you're thinking about buying or selling a house, then it would be a true pleasure to chat. Until next time.